Hi, it's Warren Eagles from the International Coast Academy. I just want to talk a little bit about Resolve 12. I've just been running uh, Resolve 12 classes in the States. The software was received very well by the students and uh, I think they enjoyed it very much, uh, the new features. And I've been learning uh, sort of as I go along really, uh, what in there I like uh, and how it's improved my workflow. Now I'm back in Australia, I'm actually starting to grade some jobs. A uh, simple little thing that I like really is that under primary wheels here now or primary bars, we have incorporated a two level system. So one gives us our normal controls that we're used to, but two now gives us this uh, highlights and shadows, uh, mid-tone detail and color boost. Now these were previously hidden in here and I found a lot of people didn't necessarily use them or didn't know what they were and thought they were just connected to the color match features. Well, they are primary controls, they are really useful, so I would urge you to get in there and play with these just like you would any other primary tool. While we're talking about primary tools, if we are in here and we are using a grade, maybe I've gone in and adjusted my color boost, I do like mid-tone detail as well, play with that, just for sharpening up the mids on maybe some of these lesser cameras. Now, if you want to now copy this to another shot, you can use the new selection tool, which highlights the surround of the thumbnail, then just middle click from the thumbnail that you did the original grading in. So again, if I want that shot here, I'm gonna change that and pull that down there to a, a greeny look, and I want that to go here. Let's hold down Command, select that, middle click that. I'll find that. A very easy and quick way. Uh, we don't get any more time as colorists do. It's less time. We do a lot of copying and pasting grades like that, especially when we're trying to establish looks. So that's a fast way of working. So that's a couple of things I'm liking. Uh, lots of uh, noise about the tracker, and I think mostly good. You can see there, there is one of my fantastically drawn shapes. As I say to my students, uh, don't come along in the class expecting to know how to rotoscope. I sort of expect you know how to do that a little bit already. But if I make a rough shape, and any of you have done my classes, I already know this footage pretty well. Um, now, the, the new tracker is called the 3D tracker. So if I now track that backwards, this actually tracks a lot better. It leaves the screen than it ever has done. One thing about running training is it uses a similar material for certain things. And so I get to know how things suddenly key better or they track better. And this is one that definitely keys better. Um, apart from the tracking, I'm also really liking the way you can now animate in here, which is totally the better way to go. So you, if you want to animate, you must be in frame mode. I'll then go to what I would call my last good frame and just click in the middle of the shape. And then it puts a little keyframe. I'm just gonna drag this back slowly. Then whenever I start to manipulate any of these guys, like there and I can add points in here or to take points away which we couldn't do before now if I step forward you can see it will animate across those points so if I go further back just to here and just to show that is true if I was to put a shape up there like this fill it with a bit of color so you can see it you can see now when I step forward that will animate to that point it's still tracked you can now individually animate points, which is so much better in here than what it was before. So really useful feature. You still have the ability to turn these off. Sometimes you might not need this, but just with tracking, just get in there. You've got to practice it and practice it will just make you faster and more confident to take on more complicated tracks. Um, we're talking about um, the new features, and I think there's obviously been a lot of talk about editing. So I don't touch too much about editing in my classes. They're still very color correction focused, and there's quite a lot to talk about in the classes, which is great as a colorist. We we love getting new tools, and one of them I have been pretty uh, enthusiastic about is uh, this little guy up here now. This is not something I'm enthusiastic, but it's still pretty useful. Gives you the full screen. Used to be down here. It's now up here. I go to this shot. Now, as I say, uh, my classes, I do key this quite a lot. And we always key this because it's quite a challenge to key this shot. 
and then this other girl comes along breaks the key or breaks the track now conventionally doing in uh, HSL uh, you get reasonably good results but it's quite a challenge so recently I was playing with this in the 3D keyer which is the new keyer now here it's a good idea to strike probably only three times uh, that's what they'd recommend in the, in the manual and talking to the guys probably three gives you a really good overall selection of red um, if we go to our highlight here we can see it gives us that I've also been changing this to HSL and then coming in here and just feathering my black clip and white clip keeping an eye on that t-shirt just there and I'm finding most results I'm probably getting a better result here using clean black we'll just remove any any speckles in the black and then clean white will come up and we'll just clean that t-shirt like that now that there is probably an easier quicker result than I would have got through HSL still might lead to be uh, obviously rotoed or fine-tuned but I did that pretty quickly so jump in play with the 3d keyer play with the amount of selections that you do make you may find that uh, using a few more or a few less strokes but generally you'll get to a stage where you make a number of strokes it doesn't actually improve the key and also try switching between RUV and HSL and just sometimes this will work for you one thing about keying uh, there's a number of tools we have and there's no set rules of what is going to work for you so I would normally understand all the tools, whether you're in here, HSLI dropper or the new Kia, or you're using curves, just get to know them well. And sometimes one will work, the other won't work. You know, the more tools you have can help you attack challenges, especially the challenges we're getting thrown at as colorists now with different cameras, different color spaces, having to match things together. I cannot remember last time I ever graded a job that was shot purely on one camera. And talking about that is another thing that I like uh, in here now. You have the ability to work, as we've always worked in Resolve, uh, DaVinci YRGB. But you can now go into DaVinci YRGB Color Managed, which is an option here in the Options page. Select Color Management, and then we can select an input color space, which could be for our cameras, or we can do that individually. Timeline color space which could be this 709 at 2.4 gamma, or we could be working in P3 DCI space. And then an output color space. Come onto a DNG, like this, or an MXF, and right click on that, and then say input the color space, and then I could find the actual color space for that shot and change it. I can do for these individuals, so there would be a ProRes of a, of a Blackmagic camera, there would be a MXF, DNG, R3D. So basically what you can do is set the color spaces for these individual cameras before you actually get them into the timeline. So when you do get to the timeline, they are going to look a lot closer. So you don't have to use LUTs on an individual basis. So improving the workflow. Like I said, I've not done it on a job yet. I'm waiting for a you know, a particular project where I do have a lot of mixed material, which is going to certainly ease my workflow and then be able to probably able to get a little bit more feedback on how this is working. But certainly it's definitely a step up in the color management side of things. Talking of step ups, another thing I have been using is this under file. And this is a little conform sequence I've got here. Typically I get things on a drive from a client and, uh, Either I want to copy just the selected clips that they've given me so I could select the timeline and I could choose to take handles and I could then copy or move or transcode from their timeline and I could add handles in here and then copy to my fast storage. Very useful. Saves me having to copy everything to my fast storage. I just copy the selections used, just copy the cut. Alternatively, under the transcode option, you may want to bring uh, H.264 file, H. files and transcode them to a ProRes or a DNxHD. 
uh, with handles, copying to new folders, it gives you new folder size as well based on what type of codec you want to use. So this has been totally reworked, much more user friendly and great if you are sharing projects and media with other post houses or other facilities. Overall, I'm really liking the GUI. I wasn't so sure at first. I'm thinking, well, why is this change? Why? I think it is a bit cleaner. And, you know, as great as it's very much about, you know, a visual thing. We're having to look at the GUI quite a lot, obviously, even if we're still using a panel. And just making things a little bit clearer, stand out, and colours that are not going to, you know, upset our eyes too much because we're constantly glancing from our grading monitors to our GUI screens. So overall, I'm getting uh, good feedback on how that is from both myself and from the students. So that's just some early thoughts. If you need any information on colorist training about V12, then uh, I've got classes coming up in Singapore, London, uh, Sydney, then I'll be heading back to the US uh, probably around October time. So please check out the website uh, www.icolorist.com and see where we are running classes. We also can customize classes for you in your shop or your facility for, for your people, whatever you want really. So please uh, download the software and play away. As I say, play, you cannot break it. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.